250,000 years ago, Neanderthals, our close ancestors, were the first Jersey men and women. Though Jersey wasn't an island then, it was part of what we now call France. We share some of our genes with those people. Some of the animals they killed were really massive, mammoth and rhinoceros. They used flint tools to skin and butcher them. They left this one behind a quarter of a million years ago. Twelve thousand years ago, other people lived here. Not Neanderthals from the ancient past, but modern humans. And they used axes, like this one, to clear trees and start the first real civilization in Jersey. They built dolmens, like Lahug B, large stone structures for their rituals, to make offerings and remember their dead. These are older than the pyramids. There's treasure trove all over our island, records of our rich history. In 1889, workmen dug this up, just here where I'm standing, in St. Helier. Nearly a kilogram of pure gold brought from Ireland, beautifully made over 3,000 years ago. Jersey is full of wonders, but sometimes it's the simple things, like the St. Lawrence Stone, that shows our history best. It began life as part of a Roman villa, but it was reused, and these markings, called strap carvings, were made by Celts around about the time Jersey got its name. We were invaded by Norsemen, Vikings, and they called the island Gerase. Ger was a Viking personal name. The Norsemen gradually became Normans, and one of them, William the Conqueror, invaded England. It was the start of an empire that stretched from Hadrian's Wall to the Pyrenees. By 1204, William's descendant, King John, was on the throne, the French refused to accept Norman rule in northern France. The French attacked, John lost, and Jersey immediately became a frontier post in a war zone. John was determined to hold on to the Channel Islands, and particularly Jersey, and so he started to defend it. He built a castle. This is Mont Orgai built to protect the island's east coast from the French, who were just 15 miles away. It was the work of English, local, and even French engineers and builders. Over the years, the castle has been rebuilt and extended until it has become a symbol of Jersey's independent spirit. And we certainly needed the castle, because Jersey was attacked time after time between 1204 and 1468. As this report of a French raid says, women and girls were killed 1,500 in number. The houses were burnt and the corn, so the people have nothing to eat. Their money and all their other chattels were carried off. But the raids had done nothing but harden Jersey's independent will and strengthen Islanders' loyalty to the Crown. Jersey continued to fight for the Crown, but with the introduction of gunpowder, Montaugai became obsolete. A new castle was needed, Elizabeth Castle. It provided a safe haven in 1646 for the exiled Prince of Wales. When his father, Charles I, was executed in London, the Prince was proclaimed King Charles II in the Royal Square in St Helier. In 1661, the man who had taken sanctuary in Jersey was crowned King Charles II in Westminster Abbey. In gratitude for the support given to him during the Civil War, he presented us with this. The mace is one of the finest of its kind, an amazing piece of craftsmanship and a mark of the esteem in which Jersey was held by the crown. For much of the 18th century we were at war with France and Jersey privateers sailed out against French shipping. And in 1781 on the 6th of January they invaded Jersey and captured St Helier. The British garrison, supported by the militia, rallied and defeated the invaders in a brief but famous battle right here in Royal Square. Despite these troubles, Jersey's economy started to boom. St Helena became the principal port and the Chamber of Commerce was formed. Shipping traffic increased, fueled by a lucrative cod fishing trade off the coast of Newfoundland. There are employed as seamen, fishermen and landsmen, about 4,000 persons. 
There are in this island many families engaged in the making of worsted, hose and mitts, boots and shoes for the use of the fisheries. The trade gives employment to about 8,000 tons of shipping, exclusive of those vessels which carry fish to the Brazilian and other markets from this island. St. Helier grew from a small market town with a harbour in the 18th century to a thriving large settlement in the 19th century. As more English people settled in the island, English styles of architecture were introduced and English gradually replaced French as the dominant language. The Victorian age had begun and they were great travellers. In 1823, the paddle steamer Medina made her first trip to Jersey from London. Railways and steamships connected England and Jersey as never before. Tourism was beginning. Though St. Helia prospered, Jersey has always been a farming island. It even gives its name to a fine fabric, Jersey. And this is the most famous of them all, the Jersey cow. The pioneer in breeding the cow we know today was Colonel Lakuta. He was a founder member of the Jersey Agricultural and Horticultural Society. We were prosperous, but not isolated being close to Europe. In 1914, the Great War broke out. 8,000 islanders left for the front. 862 were killed. In 1939, Rome was plunged into a Second World War. The Germans stayed for nearly five years until our liberation on 9th of May 1945. They were dark and difficult times. They used foreign force labour. Russians, Belarusians, Ukrainians, Poles, French, Belgians, North Africans and Spanish Republicans like my father, Francisco. Many were routinely beaten and over 100 died from illness and from brutality. We remember them on our Liberation Day. After the war, tourism began to boom as air travel became more and more important. And by 1960, Jersey was welcoming over a million visitors a year. It was known as the Honeymoon Island. As early as the 1960s though, a visionary Jersey man, Cyril Amarco, had seen that we needed to change the basis of our economy taking advantage of Jersey's unique mixture of close ties with the UK and at the same time legal separation from it. We've now got offices in different parts of the world. Hi everyone. Cyril hey, Demarcan saw a future for Jersey as a financial hub and, as he predicted, financial services eventually overtook tourism and agriculture as Jersey's biggest industry and remain so to this day. That's why I'm working for Jersey Finance in our Abu Dhabi office today, where we promote Jersey's financial expertise across the Gulf. Bye, everyone. Everyone connected to Jersey has shaped it, linking it with the wider world, defining its special character, and making Jersey into an island of treasures. My island. <laughs>